Do you know what? So many people had joked and alluded to the casting couch in Hollywood for so many years. And suddenly, with your testimony, it became a horrible reality that people realised this was no joke. It's no joke, and even the term casting couch puts the onus on so the girl or the young boy that are trying to get the role, and the other people are just they just can't help themselves, you know, the, the people in power. And the thing is, is that it's not that. It's, it's, it's been built on that, that town. Uh, Hollywood has built itself on that casting couch thing and on keeping people silent. And the thing is, it operates like a mafia. It operates like a mafia completely, but, you know, nobody ever asked me to join the mafia, and that was their big mistake. Why did you uh, take part in the settlement rather than speaking out? Well, see, I didn't take part, and there's is a misnomer that I was offered money. I requested money. I requested, bless my young heart, thought $100,000 was mm. very much a lot of money, and enough to buy a billboard from a company called Gannett Outdoors, in which I tried to buy it to say Harvey Weinstein is a rapist but they shut me down, shockingly. And uh, I was like, okay, I never signed a non-disclosure agreement. I never signed one. I said, if I hear of you doing this to another woman, I will come for you. And it was 20 years ago, and so I set about doing exactly what I said I would do. Mm -hmm. It's a relief, I suppose, to have people believe me, but I've operated in being slandered and disliked and maligned for no other reason than he purchased press all over the world to do so for 20 years to... Do you, do you feel that your Hollywood career was basically ended by Harvey Weinstein? It completely was. He didn't think that... He, he never factored in the television portion of what I wound up doing. Because, one, it was the only job I could get, but, two, I realised by taking a show called Charmed, it would have... You know, I would have just enough newsworthiness all around the world when it was time to strike. The argument on the other side is... Well, they may be criminals, but they haven't been given due process. A lot of them are being bounced out of big jobs. They're having their careers and reputations ruined without proper chance to defend themselves. What do you say to that? Well, they haven't properly come out and tried to defend themselves because they really can't, because there's such overwhelming evidence, you see. I mean, they haven't... They, the onus is also on them. If they would like to come out and defend themselves and find due process for themselves, do it. Would it be better, ultimately, to take these stories to court, to have them properly examined? Would it be easier, do you think, for the movement to see convictions? Uh, I think you have to understand the judicial system is completely stacked against victims in any way, shape or form, and that most people cannot, in fact, seek justice in that way. I think there should be specially trained police officers and, and um, justices and judges that are specifically trained in sexual assault, specifically trained in sexual harassment and abuse and things like that so they can understand it more, because right now it's going into regular court systems. And the, the rate for, you know, anybody going forward to... I mean, I tried to go to police. I tried everything I could do, and my management at the time put everything in my path to have that averted. You've become this kind of firebrand figurehead. I, I guess that's been a good and bad thing for you. How's it changed your life? It's, you know, I've... The thing is, is that it's like a thundercloud, right? Like, mm -hmm. a thundercloud can pass over you in the summertime, and then it goes back to being sunshine. And people are very afraid of rage. People are very afraid of anger, and sometimes things actually merit some rage and anger. Mm. You're not a man-hater, right? Because... I'm a, a construct of... hater. Right. A lot of people worry, a lot of men worry, frankly, uh, that this has turned into a bit of a man-hating campaign. What do you say to perhaps comfort the good guys out there who are not yeah. Harvey Weinstein? I would just say be better. Uh, to everybody. Be better, 10%. To all men? To all women. To everybody. And to everybody. Right. Everybody has a part in this. Because women had an awful big part in what happened to me. This is not just men. Mm. This, is, this is... But if you support a system that is awarding and rewarding of, say, one man really at the very top of all of these things, mm. and the women are just as bad in the brainwashing kind of thing... What well, if it, you say it's a structural problem... It's a structural it's problem. it's difficult for the women as well who you accuse of complicity, presumably. Right. They, well, if they somebody need, has that power... Right to turn on you, perhaps... But everybody needs to be better and stronger and understand. It's like, if I saw someone getting their purse stolen, I'm just the kind of person that would run after the purse mm. thief. That's just who I am. A lot of the journalists, including Ronan Farrow and others, have just received Pulitzer Prizes, uh, the ultimate awards in journalism, for their work on this. Mm. It's, been a, it's been a big thing for the media as well, hasn't it? It's been a very big thing for the media. You know, there was... Uh, I started being harassed by Weinstein behind the scenes about... Um, 
a year and a half ago, so I contacted an organization called Ultraviolet, and I said, I need help right now. I need to find the media person that's going to do this. Two years ago, I wrote an open letter to Hollywood in which I just said everything but the name. So they, they've always known. And so then Jody Cantor came mm -hmm. into my life from the, the New York, York Times. Times. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then Ronan, and I asked Ronan, can you be brave? Can you be brave? This is a really big story. It's much bigger than you and think. And he was brave. And, and he actually, was you know, he'd very. Been, he'd been bounced out of his cable news show, and then suddenly he gets this story and he runs with it and now is probably one of the most respected journalists in the country. And he's an incredible journalist. And yeah. the thing is, you know, he was bounced in, and, and the thing is, NBC took the fall for that, but it was really me. I served him with a cease and desist. Rose, because I got NBC in a war with New York Times for the story. Well, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, final question for you. Your acting career, because ultimately it was thwarted by what yeah. happened to you. So I gave that up a long time ago. You're done with acting? Yeah, I gave up... You must have had people now say to you... Come back. Come back. No, I'm a director. I directed a movie that was nominated at Sundance and, and qualified for the Oscar, and, and I, I prefer being behind the camera vastly. I was never <laughs> trying to be an actress. In my book, I was just, you know, I say it, I was discovered, so, and I, you know, I thought, well, this is as good a way as I need to pay rent, and I had no idea, actually, the stakes were much higher than just rent. You... Well, Rose... Yeah, sorry. Oh. You've obviously, you know, you describe it as a thundercloud. It's yeah. obviously been an extremely difficult time for you. Yes. You've been under enormous pressure. Yes. And you talk about everybody being 10% better. Do you feel better? I do. 10% or least more? Possibly 17%. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> now, you, seem, I, you seem it to me. You yeah. seem like it's been a very turbulent period in your it life. Was. And now, you've, now you're I've coming I've come to up. the other side. And yeah. it's, you know, causing the storm and being in the eye of the storm mm. at the same time are hard to live through. And if people mm. really knew what was going on behind the scenes, I don't know how many could have survived it.